everyone, welcome to Microsoft Graph. Uh, hope you are able to hear me properly. I think yes. Uh, perfect. So Microsoft Graph, like everybody has a question, what is Microsoft Graph? Is it really graphical representation or is it something new? So right now uh, in the market, we are all hearing about APIs and all these things through Graph, but most of the people don't know how to use it, where to use it. There's some common instances, which I think I'm gonna show you around with a lot of demos. So um, I basically want to show a lot of demos. I don't like being theoretical, it's boring, right? I can't speak for one hour on theoretical. I wanted to see how real time uh, the Microsoft Graph is working, okay? So me, myself here, Manfred, uh, I am a technology specialist at Cognizant uh, from Philadelphia, United States. I'm an MVP in Office Servers and Services. I'm also an MVP in C-Sharp Community. And visit me at the techplatform.com. Any question, anything, just ask me. If you have any questions, please go ahead and ask me there. And the same name, the Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm lucky to have that username, Manpreet here. It's easy, right, to find me? Okay. So today's agenda is www of Microsoft Graph. Like what, when, why? Like, do we need Microsoft Graph? What is Graph API? Then how does the demo happen? What is Graph Explorer? How do the tool connectors like Postman, PowerShell, you will be able to connect. So all these things are going to be more demographic. And you can always ask me questions here on the chat and I can always answer you back from here or I can go back to you later, similar way. So let's go for it. The W, W, W of Microsoft Graph. So what, where, and why? We always have this question, right? When we are talking about technology, like why do we require it? Why is it important? So Microsoft Graph is nothing but APIs, which are connected towards every technology of Microsoft. How? Okay, so initially when I think you remember when we used to work for SharePoint and Outlook, we had another snap-ins, another directories, the DLs, we need to add them to work on. Right now, you don't have to require all those things, just be connected to the Graph API. Through Graph API, I can connect to OneNote, File Share, SharePoint, OneDrive, everything, all the SharePoint products in one. And the best part of it is simple line of code. You don't have to call web services and things like that. A simple get post method, which you're gonna call in the API. And that's how all the learning is gonna come in here. It works on with the single endpoint and you pass the data through API. So what is Microsoft Graph? Like, as you all know, it's a data and intelligence to provide 365. To be honest, it's just a connecting with it towards one platform to another. And all Microsoft platform together connected in one model with n number of data access, filter access, sorting access, how it works. So as I said, the Graph API offers a single point, hdb.graph.microsoft.com. It provides access to the rich and people-centric data. It's inside exposed to like Microsoft 365 throughout. So every Microsoft 365 product is connected to it. So this connection is actually done by REST API or SDK, which we call, to access the endpoint. And you can build all those platforms related to it. For example, if I have to connect SharePoint or OneDrive, you can keep on adding up graph API, connecting all the endpoints and making the service more powerful. And this helps uh, in a way, you don't have to maintain any security, you don't have to maintain any compliance issue. Everything is managed by Microsoft because you is a call, call an endpoint from a Microsoft product. So when you call from a Microsoft product, it already has access issues, compliance issues, security, all those organizations of data leak, data leakage and all those things are covered up. So in ideal view, you don't have to do that. It's all connected to the single point. Exciting, right? It is. Then when you come to Microsoft Graph Connectors, what is Graph Connectors? This is something beautiful. And I want 
be able to go through this topic here. It's a vast, vast topic. But yeah, I will I'll give you a brief demo. So what is Microsoft Graph Connector says? Okay, now I talked about all the platforms of Microsoft 365 you will be able to connect, like Outlook, OneDrive, SharePoint. How about I say, using Microsoft Graph, you will be able to connect external data. External data means service now, Adobe, all the external platforms, Facebook, Boss. So any any database, any CDS, any data model uh, company, you will be able to connect and add it to your search engine of Microsoft. Is it an amazing? So for example, I'm searching for a file, I'm searching for a ticket number in ServiceNow. I don't have to go to ServiceNow to check a ticket number. I can check it from my Microsoft or SharePoint, I'm logged in. I can just search it for a ticket number and the ticket will come out. It's good, right? So let's see how they're all connected. So Microsoft Graph Data Connect is a set of tools and which is like kind of a scalable because you're gonna pull it from Azure, you're gonna pull it from SharePoint, everywhere. So it's like a delivery model. You keep on pulling it throughout you and the cache data serve as a data source for Azure development, which will build n number of applications which real-time scenario, real-time data flow, and connect your platform with graph API solutions to different platforms. And it can be either internal Microsoft or it can be external. So what is Microsoft Graph <coughs> in a way? Uh, so I say it's all about the APIs you're gonna talk about, right? You're gonna able to connect internal Microsoft 365 services like Dell, Excel, Microsoft, Bookings, Planner, SharePoint, I think the booking name is now Shift. And similar way, enterprise mobility. And so all this security, all the parameters, all the Azure, they are going to manage the same way as they are. So you don't have to open the security to allow an API to pass through. That's where Graph API comes in. Graph API is part of the product. So you don't have to be exposing your API endpoints for getting the end data. It prevents leakage of data, it prevents hacking, of course, and it keeps the data more secure. And not only you can connect to Office Microsoft 365 or a number of enterprise solutions, you can also connect to Windows 10, uh, your own Windows 10 platform. So it's easy for you to do Windows file share, for example, uh, search in or any any local endpoints you can connect with your Windows 10 and similar ways connected to Dynamics 365 Visual Central. So you'll have Power Platform, Power Flow, Automate, Virtual Agent, like it's making it more powerful if you see. Why Microsoft Graph? Oh my God, that's a big question. Like as you see, I, I'm not gonna take it, you are gonna see it in real time. Why are we using Microsoft Graph? Of course, it has a rich context, the lot of data flow is so easy. It has deep insight, a real-time scenario of course an API, so it's gonna be real time. And it has a broader reach. So I'm not only able to control or connect the data of Microsoft, I'm also able to connect the data of a number of third platforms. So let's talk about how graph is connected. So this is an architecture, okay. And if you Google Microsoft 365 architecture, this is the diagram you're gonna see. So if you see, graph is nothing but a passerby. So there are two products. One is the Microsoft 365, you have your document, SharePoint, portals, OneDrive and all those things. Another one is all the external products we are using as connectors. So those two are connected to Microsoft Graph, okay? So now what you do is, for example, you're building a web app, you're building a board, you're building a device, or you're building workflows. You can use Graph to do your processing. So when you use processing Graph, Microsoft Graph is gonna not only bring you data and to and fro, like read and write access to your connectors, which are enterprise, but also to your Microsoft products. So now, like I'm building a board and I have to, I'm taking a schedule builder, for example. I'm taking a schedule, uh, and people are actually coming in and booking an appointment. So they're coming in and they're saving all the data in the bot. The bot is using Graph API and saving it back to my SharePoint calendar. 
So and if I, if those users have to search back the data, they can go in, log in, and Microsoft will go back to SharePoint calendar and bring back the data. So it's like a to and fro motion, all under Microsoft identity. So you don't have to worry about security while opening an API. You don't have to worry about how platform is going to be exposed. Everything will be connected. And along the graph, you have AI. Of course, AI is everywhere now in Microsoft. So it's going to connect your data graph to artificial intelligence and help you in making your calls, the API calls, much easier, much better. So right now, Microsoft Graph API is a gateway for Azure AD, Excel, Intune, Outlook, OneDrive, OneNote, SharePoint, and Planner. And they also added to do Microsoft to do to the list. So these are the Graph API connectors, the, or I should I call it gateway, which Microsoft is in full house. There's others which are still in preview, but it doesn't matter. You can still use it. It's going to still work on the same way. They just keep it in preview for people to just have a play around and make the product more stable. So these are the supported languages and the platform uh, Graph API works. It works on Android, Angular, ASP, iOS, Java, JavaScript, Node, Python, Ruby, Xamarin, like just name it. What is the language which is easy for you to use that and you'll be able to collect Graph. Interesting, right? Graph Explorer. So, so when Microsoft made Microsoft Graph, it gave you an endpoint. Now, where will you test this endpoint? Though? Do you want to try? So, it gave you a studio, something called as Graph Explorer, which is now globally available. It's live, and you can have a look. Free of course, just have to log in. And as I said, I'm going to be a guy of demos. So let's, let's see some demos. So I'm going to just log into Graph Explorer, simple login. I just want to show you how easy it is to log into Microsoft Graph Explorer. If you have a developer account, just log in with a developer account. If not, create one developer account. It's free. You get an E5 license for one year and it keeps on extending. So go ahead. So if you see, I'm logged in here with my dev account here. And this is my profile. So this is something called a Graph Explorer. It's a studio. So let me just brief it here. I'm on the Chrome. Yeah, I'm cheating. Mike stuff in a way. But love it. So if you see Microsoft Graph Explorer, it's nothing but a web interface of exploring all the API. It gives you a preview of how your data is gonna come. So for example, it's all JSON format request command. You do a get, you do a post. And uh, put bash delete similar way you have the versions of V beta like beta ones are now beta v1 open this more stable ones and then you have all this query so let me check about myself get my profile so when I run my query it go and get my profile this is me my title my name my location everything comes in so I don't have to do anything right. So it's a very easy process for us to understand. Uh, I'm sorry, I closed the screen. So if I, for example, I, I want to play around with the Graph Explorer of me, my profile, I just go in there and I get the data from there. It's, it's, it's going to be a one-to-one -one connect. So if the Graph Explorer goes in and brings out the endpoint. So how the pattern is working is more important. So for example, I'm requesting a Graph API, okay? This is just my HTTP method, okay? And I'm using a query meter. So let, let me show you first a slide here. Let me go back. So yeah, so the Graph Explorer API works in with a simple request button. Like we, as I said, it's a normal put guest uh, request which we put in on a JSON. And we get the request. Microsoft goes and requests the API request to with the endpoint. 
you are gonna pass the following parameter the graph.micro.com slash the version is it data or is it version which version are you gonna find it the resource the resource is which the graph which are you referencing the resource in the graph that you're gonna reference and the query parameters do you have some query filterable type query and you want it to be coming up on the response you can mention it directly there you don't have to have your data model set up. You can actually set up your API. Interesting, right? Now comes the response. So after you make a response, a response is returned with a status code, a response message, and the next link. Like, let's go ahead, let's get a response here. So when I go back to my explorer, here. Yeah. So if you see the response header, the response comes in, the all the way you got a preview of all the data details which are coming in here. I can see all the data which is loading in here along with the status code here. And the best part is you can have it all in the adoptive card. So I just have to copy this adoptive card code and use it wherever I want to. So you don't have to do a scratch coding for making it looking UI or UX experience with adoptive card. Everything comes here. So you have a toolkit component. This is a toolkit component. We're using the code snippet where you use a very graph client and authorization provider. And you have the response header going through the cache control, content type, and the request ID. And you have the preview here. If you like it, yes, if you like it, you have to go and play with it. Similar way, I'll use another one. So for example, I use my messages. Okay, nobody has texted me messages or not. I can't see it. So let's see, I am in Microsoft Teams, which are the teams that have joined in. So when I pass my graph explorer, I see my profile, which is me. And then I go for query join teams, all the teams I have. It tells me all the Microsoft Teams I am a part of. Nice, right? No way if I go to see if you see these are all the products on my left side. You have all the applications you can get and retrieve data from from batching Excel groups inside Microsoft Teams to do as I was talking about to do. Then you have OneDrive, OneNote, Calendar, People, Personal Contacts, Planner, Search. Search is huge, yeah. A uh, security, SharePoint list, SharePoint site. So everything. Or oh, like get my organization default site, so it's gonna get me my root site. So this is my root site, like platform.sharepoint.com. So as you see, all this is already set. So what you are doing is you are using a response, you are using a request from Microsoft Graph to get a response from a single streamlined process. And that's how this connectivity brings in all the various platforms from user level to product level. And so this you did, okay, so now we all did, we did this R&D with, okay, it was fun, we did see the graphics were, it's beautiful, I logged in, I can see all my history I have worked on, I can see all my sample queries. So when you go to sample queries, for example, let me go back to my get my profile. So this is my sample query. This is what I'm requesting. You can request additional parameters. Like you can ask for what you require. You can remove all these parameters. Right now showing everything and everything. You can have, I just want a given name, a job title, a mobile phone number, an office location. So based on the development of the product or the application you're gonna do, you can choose the request header and the response of how it should come. So it allows you to lock it down in a way. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so you're gonna lock the application or you lock down the graphics per. So for example, I, I will ask you, hey, I, uh, can I have a core API where I can get email IDs of all the users in my organization? I will be like, yeah, why not? I can build you one. So I can give that person the email ID, the mail performance of the request or in the response and not share the phone number, not share the location or principal name and things like that. So in a way you can cover and the content, you can control the content flow, how and what you want to flow in. Nice. Similar way, 
as I was talking about, you can modify the permission. So right now I have user it all connected. <coughs> you can connect your graphic API Explorer to have whether if you want them to only have read access, you want them to provide them with read and all. So it's like it's like if you're going to go to a graph explorer, you're gonna provide authentication to your uh, application in my uh, sorry Azure. Similar way, uh, you have to do the same thing in graph explorer. And you have an access token which comes in with the graph explorer, and you can use the same access token for accessing another platform. I think we are gonna see one access token. If I have time, I have 20 minutes. Let's see what we can do and what we can happen. So. Let's go back <coughs> to the deck. So we were talking about the request and the response which comes in and the methods which you're gonna use, the get, post, patch, put, delete. Like these are normal methods. We use to read the data, create a new resource, update a resource, replace a resource, and remove a resource. So these are gonna be your current HTTP methods to get the data in and out. So it's mostly like an API, REST API. How we use HTTP methods there is gonna be the same. Okay, now, so this was Graph Explorer. Okay, you were able to get data from a preview engine of a studio, of an environment, of an explorer. And how about now when you go to real time scenario and you need to write a PowerShell script? That PowerShell script, you need to update things from there, get the data from there, or push the data from there. It's like both the ways. We use PowerShell like so much, and I love it. I love PowerShell more than a client scripting server side because this is more in your know, control. You are the one connecting to the platform and going to the next level uh, using your CMD less functions and featuring it. So I think that's how PowerShell is my favorite and I think it's more reachable. So we are going to see now how Microsoft Graph you can connect with PowerShell. Super simple method, don't have to worry because I'm going to show a demo. So, so all these things are doable. If now after the session, all this recording will be available on the website of the team here. So they are going to provide you all the information and you can always go back and do the step-by-step -step process. I want to keep it step-by-step -step because it's all about learning, right? We're all here to learn something new. So go back and just start doing like just go to graph explorer try to log in with your office account or any organization account if you're able to go through good if not create a developer account and then you can use it so let me come up here and roll out the powershell engine so i'm going to use windows powershell Here we are. So I have some basic code models which I can actually show it to you here. So okay. So I'm going to first thing is go to basic Windows PowerShell and try to install the Microsoft Graph. So I think I already have it. Let me try. So I'm going to enter it two times. It takes a little time. Hope it's doesn't start installation. So it's the install module name Microsoft Graph. Simple one line command. Just enter it and it's gonna run. I don't know what's happening. So uh, by the time you're waiting, so PowerShell gives you n number of commands to play around. Okay, so it's already installed, so I'm good with that. And now I'm gonna see the what are the versions of the install. So I already have a cheat sheet where I'm copying and pasting it to make it faster rather than me writing there. And then it's gonna, I think we'll need two more hours to finish the demo. So if you see, these are the graph connectors which are connected to the gallery. So I have my audience booking, my calendar, my files, my SharePoint, my Teams, my user, all these are directly connected to a platform, right? So how, how do you get all these things and still uh, is able to connect? 
So for example, let's go and get all the modules. Okay, so this one was all the available licenses you have connected to your graph. So all the installed modules you have connected to the graph. So let's talk about, for example, if I want to see what are the commands available in terms for the team. So before that, I'm going to connect us to the graph. It's a simple process. So when I go to this, connect graphs, scope, user read and all. So you have authenticated your Microsoft Graph to give you access. And right now I'm already connected. So it showed me welcome to Microsoft Graph. But if you are not, it's going to open an Office 65 sign-in credential. You sign in with the same credentials, your dev account or all your organization account and click on allow. Once you click on allow, your PowerShell is connected to the Graph Explorer. Good, right? Now, so now when I'm connected, I can actually use real-time data. For example, let me show you this. So I'm going to go back here. I'm getting getting my top users in my list with the display name, user principal name, and user type. So it's going to go back and check my tenant and get me 10 people from the with the user ID, display name, and user principal name. So it's loading, it's loading. So if you see, uh, once you've connected with your Graph Explorer and you connect your credentials, it's very easy for you to go and play around with the control. You don't have to go in and wait for the modules to work in, go on for the other access permissions. No, you don't have to. All the security is set by the Graph Explorer itself. Okay, it's taking its time. I'll wait for a minute if not. Okay, so let, let me talk a bit more about Graph. So Graph comes at the Azure, Azure database. So everything is in here with the Graph database. So when you go about talk about the Graph Explorer, it's all Azure giving you a better format to play around. So for example, right now when you have access tokens and you're passing your API, it's difficult uh, for you to get the data hosted on platforms. For example, I don't know it's taking some time. I'll open a new graph explorer by that time. Okay, so I'm gonna get all the modules which are available for Teams, for example. So let me get Microsoft Graph Teams. Yeah. So if you see all the commands of Microsoft Teams comes in. So for example, if I have to add a channel member. I just use this command, put the name of the member and bypass it. Similar way, if I want to get this person or I, I, if I want to get this channel or if I want to update the team owner. So if you see all these functions are applied to you directly. Initially, we have to create anything on Microsoft 365 and use Azure functions. You don't have to just by pass a single line of code, single line of DLL, and the source take care of it. Nice, right? So similar way, this have a number of commands. Not only for Teams, for SharePoint, for Outlook, you just name it and you have it. And you see the list, it keeps on growing. And every day, Microsoft keeps on pushing new tasks, a new agent, and new tech. So I'm gonna put in for Outlook task. So these are the functions for Outlook tasks. You get attachments, task folder, and things like that. Similar way, I'm gonna put all the commands available for the licenses. So if you see, if you are planning to build a PowerShell, you don't have to actually use uh, connect to SharePoint first and then connect to the database. Or similar way, you don't have to connect back to Outlook and then connect to your database. Just connect to the graph. The graph will take care of both inputs left and right. So it's a two and two flow. It's like a free flow process, which keeps on going. And so if you see the functions, they keep on coming in. So you go there, you get the results. You, if you if one, you can just set the results back or create a new record or update a new record. Everything comes in the subblow function. So similar way, I was actually going to talk about how you can do SharePoint connectivity. Let me try if I can now. So here I am.
My system is terribly slow today. But it's working, and I think it should. So I'm, I'm trying to get my root site ID for my SharePoint application. Let's see if it can go to, if I have access to that and bring me back the results. So, yep, here it is. So it tells my name, the site name was my root site, tech site, tech platform, the SharePoint.com, and it gives me the GUID. Right. So let's see, I think I have a communication site here, which I'm going to search for. So I'm going to pass this parameter. No, I did copy it. So let's start search for a site. So in my command, I'm going to search for a SharePoint application. Is there any site called as communication? Oh, yes, there is a site called communication. Perfect. So how about, okay, let me, I uh, probably need the site, I can use the site's ID and pass it for various function I want to do. Like, it can, it can be anything, right? Yeah. So, I'm gonna just pass it here. And I'm, if you see, I'm using the communication site and I'm looking for select object ID. And I have selected the object ID. I'm gonna get the site pages now for the site. So if you see, it's so easy. I'm not doing any effort. I'm gonna get, I'm not calling SharePoint. I'm calling Microsoft Graph. And the yes, I'm like, okay, I did a copy paste message. So I'm gonna get it again. So I have to write it. So get. So this is what happens. Like you can be clever every time, and it doesn't make you easier. Oh, sorry. So the intelligence helps me to bring back the data I'm looking for. So you don't have to actually look for data. To get empty site page, I'm passing the site ID, which I already have on the top. And then I'm gonna pass the site. I think it's gonna be one site. So let me check size. I think, so we are just following one row of data. Uh, ID. No. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I know what I'm doing here. So when I go in here, let me search the commands. So let me get my display name. Okay, here it is. So let me get my object ID. There it is. And when I get my object ID, I'm gonna just get the root applications of which site are we working on. Here you go. So I get the UID of the communication site. A similar way, you can just make UID, uh, like UID is just an, I can have options like, Chat engine, like let okay, let this is another explorer. I've just opened it, and you can have, for example, all the chats I have done. I don't think I've done a lot of chats in my tenant. Let's see, do I have any chat engine here? It's going. So any chat I have there on the Teams is going to populate the data here. And so, for example, I'm searching for a file in my chat. You can have your command model to use graph. Oh yeah, I've done so many chats, so many meetings. So if you're looking for a meeting, you're looking for a chat, you can get the data one to one. You can get messages. Like for example, I'm looking for, hi, I have written about SharePoint search script. And you can find that on your chat engine through Graph Explorer in one click. 
So it's nothing but uh, what I'm saying is you're not going to do a graph explorer. You're not going to actually search in PowerShell, right? You're going to just go to search command. Uh, but when you build applications, for example, you're building a global search engine for your internet solution or internet company, or you're making a, a solution where you want accessibility from teams out to SharePoint and everything in one search. So I don't have to go to teams to search it, my chat engine. You can get the search result directly on the top platform. So this is where the graph explorer comes and PowerShell being PowerShell. Like you should saw how easy is the command you to get set and push the request and get the response. It's easy for us to play around with the data, get the data, receive the data, write it back the data, all in secure environment. Nice, you, did you like it? Okay, oh, I am here. Perfect, uh, you can always post in me questions here or I can always come back to you. So have the cheat sheet if you see so i was talking about right so when you try to connect uh your model it's going to ask you like this that this is on the consent which you need to provide and on behalf of my question you provide all this content so this is what will happen so when you are trying to connect and you, in your powershell it's going to ask you verify the user you will log in like i have logged in with my tech platform id and then you will be made a verified user of using Microsoft Graph PowerShell, which is in preview, but it's perfect and it's beautiful. Postman. Now, Postman is the, how do I say? I want to say the platform. It's one of the greatest platform to build APIs and that's what everyone does it in the whole world. And why? Because it, it works in that way. And Graph Explorer, as you see, so let me go back here. Okay, yeah. so Graph Explorer was the one where you saw a preview of all the Graph Explorer. You cannot build one, you can just edit here and there and left and right. But if you want to have a Graph Explorer, for example, you want to make a Graph API, you want to open it, your content, your resource for a third party company, Postman kind of the companies uh, or the solutions are the one where, which will allow you to do that. And it's free of course, it's a community edition. Just log in with your credentials. It gives you a free license to do much more things. So you don't have to actually, I won't say buy it. You will have to buy it if you want to do very rich contents. But basically you don't require. So as you all know, we will be doing a demo. Of course, how can we not do? So I'll, I'll open up Postman here. And let me just click on send here. Oh, by the way, it's still working. Okay, I was just doing a graph test, like showing. So this is Postman. For people who don't know how Postman works, this is the Postman. So let me go back. I know. See, the it came in and it gave an error because Postman constant stays for like 15 minutes, and you need to refresh it. I have. Uh, I don't know how much time I have. I need to talk to and yeah. One second. Andrea, can, uh, can I go ahead for 10 more minutes? Perfect, when the host doesn't tell you, it means yes, you can go ahead. Andrea, are you there? Bueno. So okay, let's go back to our tenant. Okay, so I'm gonna open you how to do this. Okay, this is nothing but a graph explorer D version, D. So it's like more of a detailed version. So if you see on here, so I'm gonna close everything. Let me close everything. I was just, you know, we all have to test so that we don't mess it up. Okay, so I was doing this test in the morning. Mm, everything was fucking amazing. So I just want to show. I'm going to close, close all those things. And today my laptop has decided to be really slow because it's Friday, I think, and it wants to take its own day. <laughs> all right. Sorry. 
So I removed everything. Okay, I'm not gonna copy anything from there. So when you come in, uh, so Cloud Explorer, for example, any any uh, technology when you use uh, for us, we are gonna use Explorer. We need to import like we use Visual Studio and we try to bring in all the assemblies and DLL. Similar way, you have to import Graph Explorer all the DLLs. It's easy. Microsoft has provided those links up in the website. I think I also have it here. Uh, let me hash it. So, if you see, there are two cheat sheets, like I named them cheat sheets. So, these are the two raw files I can get it. So, let me copy it from here. I cannot copy on the preview more. So, I'm just gonna copy the JSON files. It has all the explore things I need to. So, I'm gonna click on continue. So, import. A collection already exists because yes. So I'm gonna replace it because we are gonna do it with new. And so I'm gonna add another one of Postman collections. So this is specific for Postman. Uh, if you want to use something else, please go ahead, go to Graph Explorer website. They will give you a direct link to import all the. So again, using the link. Perfect. So if I get on the right, if you see environment Microsoft Graph, environment imported. So when I go in here, this is a Microsoft Graph environment. It comes in. So if I go to the preview mode, you see I have the client ID, client secret, tenant ID, and access token, which is required. So so what you are doing now is when you go to access the postman, you do an access to the Azure. So in Azure, you need to provide credential access to either read or write and all for your client ID or the application ID you're gonna build. So now what I did was I loaded my DL, it's perfectly fine, but now how do I DL knows that I'm authenticated to get the user or get the data flow? It doesn't know, right? So let me go back here, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna see, uh, the problem is with Postman is you need to have a little time. I, I'm running short of it, but I'm gonna still gonna show you as quickly as that. So go to your portal or azure.com, use your 200 free credits and they are gonna give you again 200 more credits. So don't worry about that. Go to the app services. Okay, sorry, no, where did I go? Okay, not on the app service, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm here in my resources. Okay, I'm on a long account. Let me log in with the right account here. And yeah, perfect. I got it. So I've logged in now. So just go to the app registrations. So the thing is, you're gonna register an app. Like for example, I've already registered a couple of apps. I'm gonna just go here in one of them because we don't have time. So if I when you register a graph, you need three things. One is your client ID. One is your tenant ID. And one is your client secret. Where do I get your client secret? Simple, you go to certificates and see it's on the left here. And create a new client secret. Mostly you keep this as never and save this password always. It's easy, right? you have to do that. Okay, so for me it's like 2020. This is nice, it never get expired. Okay. <clears throat> and 99 years, I don't know who will be there till that time. Okay, but still. So, but. So this is how, and the authentication. So these are the three things you require. So you come in here, you provide a web redirect URL. As you see, I'm getting getcoastman.com or callback. That's it. These are the three things you did. What did you do? Let's go back, fact, fact. You went to the app registrations. You clicked on new registration. It will give you a client ID and a tenant ID. Then you come back to the certificates and secrets. You create a client ID copy that in the notepad and keep it somewhere. Then you come back to authentication, you click on add a platform, you give a redirect UI, like for example, this is app.getpostman.over.callback, and you click on save. Simple. Nothing much you did, right? Four steps, four steps in your Azure. Now we don't need Azure anymore. Done, you have done. So if what you have done is you're given access to your 
credentials to access Graph Explorer. And this authentication, what you built up here in this app registration is what Postman is going to use. So Postman is going to hit the app registration, check your authentication, and get back to the result. Nice. I think I'm speaking a lot. Okay, so here, so when you click on this icon, uh, let me edit. So this is our client ID, client secret, and tenant ID. So uh, when you create an app registration, as I said, get the client ID. I think I can use my old one, so let me try it, okay? Normally it will fail because it gets expired, but I still nothing to try hard on, right? So I'm gonna put a client secret ID, and I was already using my Azure, where's my Azure? Okay, I'm gonna use the new one which I was playing around, which was working. So I think that's easy to do. So I'm gonna use the client ID. So I'm passing the client ID here in my environment. And I, sorry, this is client ID. And then I'm gonna use the tenant ID. Here is my tenant ID. Lovely, hope they're different, yeah. And I'll update it. So uh, what I did was I have given my client ID and app ID for Postman. So when it goes to run, you, it will have access to, it doesn't have to worry about the access token. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate an access token. Super easy, okay? Don't have to worry how to generate an access token. It's just super simple, just go ahead. So I'm gonna do that. So let me go back to it using a general access token. So I'm gonna come in here. So I'm just making a shortcut. Ideally, what you have to do is I'm clicked on add, I'm adding it here. So when I go to collections here, so this is my launch pad. So you have all this request, guest post report, as we all are aware. I'm gonna use a post request because I want to post it and then get my access token. So I'm putting a post access ticket and I know I have my body with overcome. I can pass in client ID, client secret, and ID. Uh, so, okay, let's do it. Hi Andy, I hope I have time to go ahead with the demo. And the access token. So access token is what we are gonna create one. So, uh, and I don't wanna keep it blank right now. And I need a client ID here. So you don't have to refer it again, as I said, because we already made it like a variable. Use the variable. Like don't do the hard work. Just use the variable and get all the details from there. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Coming back to the cloud explorer getting my data from there and i'm gonna pass the data but to be honest, as i said i'm just gonna do a shortcut here just passing the value so that we both save some effort so this is gonna be really really This is for client ID. Oh, I've done my extra column. So I'll add it again. If you see, I'm just adding all the parameters I required and oh, pop it a lot. the variables are gonna go in and fetch me an access token. So this access token is what I'm gonna get in client ID. Uh, tenant ID. There it is. Let me try to send it. Or request URL send it. Where is request URL?
So the Yurkes URL is nothing but your graph explorer URL, which you are gonna use and add it to the reference. So let's go there and let's get the request URL. Which is nothing but the graph.microsoft.com, which I copied from the explorer. So what it's going to do is, it's using my client secret, client ID for my authentication in my tenant and using my request URL and fetching the result. So I think we have not created a new client ID, so it should let this URL. Okay, there's a gap here. Why does it like? One second, let me do this. Lovely. So I have the client ID, client ID, client ID, okay, and I did the URL here, the ID, the ID, Great. Okay. So now, so now what has happened is, so I was saying, so it's, it's going to take in my client secret, my tenant ID, my access token, and fetch the result, the search result directly from that. So this will make sure uh, my arm was indicated and fetch you the result. So I'm going to do the same partial uh, script result which we were doing to get the result. So it's like, just let me show you a sample. So how the sample works. The sample will be working in a similar way as we are doing it here. And then I'm going to go back to the paging application. And... So, okay, I'm um, on the other screen, so probably be thinking, where is this guy doing it? And here we go. So I got everything. So if I go back to my collection, all this user gets added here. All the applications, so if you see SharePoint, if you see Teams, if you see all the members, get team channels, users join the teams, get the team, archive the team, all the platforms joins in one. So this helps you to get the data and play around with it. So when you will pass the JSON, okay, for example, I'm just passing. So you're going to give the team ID, like we don't have a team ID right now. So it's, you can manage the authorization, the headers you want to pass through. And you can add more, remove less, and all gets added to the patching method. So I might be using post mostly. So when you go to the path, you click on the send, it's gonna fetch you all the responses the similar way we're doing. So if uh, I am gonna do this authentication here, let's just try to do that authentication here. So one step authentication, get the post back. Love it. So I'm passing a JSON here and I'm putting it here. So if you see, normally either you can do it here directly, like I'm passing the access token directly here. I don't have to go out. I think it should fail. Yeah, because uh, access token is empty. I have to give an access token here. So uh, either you provide a parameter here or you go directly to the broken and get it thing. So in that way, what will happen is, so the graph explorer you're using, the uh, format you're using, it's going to be the same. So I'm going to use, see, for example, I'm going to post a request type. So I'm going to post a request type here, um, using a tenant ID, which we already have. And then I'm going to try to send the request. Okay, so it's telling me to check here. Okay, I think I... This one come in here. Okay, there are no key values here. So let me add key values here. So I'm gonna type grant type because we need to provide an authentication. So authentication will be again client credentials. And then I'm gonna use a client ID. The same way, okay? So what we are doing is the same way what how we were achieving it. So I'm gonna pass the client ID, client secret. 
which we already noted. I just want to do a rough work. This, you don't have to do this. You have to go on a proper channel and you can actually align it while you're working on it. So just go in there, provide all the key parameters. I'm just doing a shortcut to just show you how easy it is to play around. Uh, this is mine. Uh, so let me try it now. Does it authenticate? No, it does not authenticate. So because, yeah, because what you have to do is you have to go in there, create a brand new like service account. So it takes a five minutes to roll in those five steps. Go in, create app registration, register an app, register them as a tenant, and you are all good to go. So when you do that, you're gonna see all the headers which will populate and all the like test results which will come right now. There's in, no data empty because there is no data here. Okay, I know there's no test results because there's no backend here. So when you will do that, so it will be like not only like user level, it's going to be like SharePoint level, personal level, and and for the developers, you're going to provide an access to them directly on the API. So this is how it will work. You are going to give them rights on the Azure access or uh, app registration. So they will have the app ID, that's it. They won't have even knowing where the data is. So for example, you're going to give me an access to SharePoint and ask me, I want a list of all users from SharePoint. You will not give me an access to SharePoint. You will give an access to the Graph API. So you prevent the data and moving, the data loss and or the data leakage. You just give them an access to the Graph Explorer. Me as a developer, go to the Graph Explorer, read the data and save it. Rather than me hitting a PowerShell directly to SharePoint or Power directly to Teams or writing a console application. So there are n number of ways to type to graphics. So you can actually write a console application, similar way, just use the same parameter, saying get post and get the... Uh, so it's, if you see, I'm already 15 minutes over the time, but still I still need to just close it down. So if you see, this postman uh, is one of the examples of the graph explorer of how an easy way you can get and fetch the result data and how it's easy to play around with data without touching the product or touching the application. <sighs> that was crazy, right? And any questions, anyone? I'm here for it. Right now, later, just ask me if you get any stuck. How do we do this? The step number three, I couldn't get it. Just give me a send me a text anywhere Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and like, I uh, will reply you back. Let's go back to Andrea. Andrea, you there? I can keep on speaking. What do you mean? Should I stop? Or go ahead. So I'm asking the organizer, should I stop or go ahead? If they ask me to go ahead, we can actually do a postman. If they say no, we have to stop. Okay, until he replies me. So, okay, so yeah, he has asked me to end the session. So as I said, so when you go to the postman, just do simple steps. First thing, configure the Azure, and then you do the second part of it. 